the basic understanding of the concept of social action, understanding the process and strategies of social action, understanding the models and principles of social action and also the important skills evolved for the practice of social action. It is a well known fact that it is extremely difficult to bring about change, especially in a situation where those capable of initiating it may also be adversely affected by the change. Mary Richmond recognized social action as a method of social work as early as 1922. It has not received much attention by the social workers, particularly in developing countries where perhaps it is more relevant. Kulkarni quoted that in developing countries, social action is crucial and must precede social work. It is wasteful in a developing country to start with social work and leave social action lagging behind. Social action creates the necessary conditions and climate which social work could be done more effectively. The aim of social action is not directly to change people's values and attitudes, however important this may be for lasting change, but to modify the policies and priorities of social, economic and political institutions. Let us look at the brief historical review of social action. Social action is as old as human society. Its manifestation in some form or other can be tracked from the available historical records from the Pelabian protest against Rome in the 5th century BC from ancient Rome to civil rights movements in the United States. It has had a long and variety history. Its example in West could be seen in the resistance of Netherlands to Spanish rule in the mid 16th century, the boycott by Irish peasants in 1880, Bloody Sunday of 1905, the Eastern German uprising of 1953, the Hungarian revolution of 1956, and the bus by court of Afro-Americans in USA. These organized efforts remained mostly action-oriented cases as reaction to the initiative of the opponent until the beginning of the American civil rights movements. The settlement houses which were started in the UK and USA to improve the conditions of the poor and which proved ineffective over the years could be regarded as the first step by the professionals in the areas of social action and reform. This approach however remained generally a cooperative and consensus building one. Sololinsky later questioned this model and under that banner of social action, he and his followers undertook varieties of programs ranging from customer guidance to picketing. He advocated conflict model of social action rather than cooperative approaches. In ancient India, Buddhism and later on other religious movements emerged as social protest movements. Oppressive Mughal rule in 17th century led to rise of rebellions in Jats, Sikhs and Marathas. The rulers as usual regarded these developments as a law and order problem. Such primitive revolts continued up to 1857. During the British period, especially after 1857, revolts were mainly restorative, religious, economic and political policies, famine conditions, land revenue systems, new administrative systems, rainous taxations and others. In the area of social reforms, the readers were extremely preoccupied with the needs of the upper caste women. The approach of Raja Ram Mohan Roy was elitist and based on study, rational analysis and synthesis. He used Shastras to abolish Sati, self-immolation of women after the death of their husband. On his efforts, Sati became a public issue and a national evil by 1825. Further in 20th century, various methods and techniques of social action were evolved, which were later refined by Gandhi. He wrote series of articles on passive resistance. However, the credit of making the resistance active also goes to Gandhi 
and his experiments in both Africa and India. In Gandhian era, social reforms were linked to political independence as part of integrated social political movements. Gandhi creatively synthesized India's cultural and historical traditions with the unique interpretation of the principle of militant non-violent resistance to all forms of institutional evils. Let us look at some definitions of social action. Mary Richman, way back in 1922, defined social action as mass betterment through propaganda and social legislation. Sidney Meslin in 1947 viewed social action as a process of social work, mainly concerned with securing legislation to meet mass problems. Arthur Denham in 1958 defined social action as efforts to bring about change or prevent change in current social practices and or situations through education, propaganda, persuasion or pressure on behalf of objectives believed by the social actionists to be socially desirable. Friedlander in 1977 defined social action as an individual, group or community efforts within the framework of social work philosophy and practice that aims to achieve social progress, to modify social policies and to improve social legislation and health and welfare services. The East early Western writers in uh, social work therefore saw the social action as a method of bringing about change in the existing system primarily through the means of social legislation. Nanavati in 1965 viewed social action as a process of bringing about the desired change by deliberate group and community effort. He further stated that social action does not end with the enactment of policies which was the real test of the success or failure of social action. Social action in India has been viewed as a method to be used for bringing change. The scope varies from problem to problem. According to Siddiqui, welfare approach is gradually wearing off and the contradictions in democratic system underline the need for new alternatives. According to him, this is the most controversial and most challenging method. Social work as a profession has its core values as social justice and equality. Social action is a method advocated to achieve this. Let us now look at the process of social action. The first step in the process of social action in view of the definition suggested in this block would be making people aware of the causes and situations responsible for the social problem. Hence, the stage will be the analysis of the issue involved. The next step would be to share this analysis with the people, especially by using the mass communication to develop awareness. It should be followed by efforts to mobilize people to recognize or to project goals and strategies to achieve them. Lee has suggested nine tactics which are used by social actionists and they are also indicative of the stage in the process of social action. So, the strategies and tactics of social action are number one, collaboration. In this strategy, the social workers collaborate with the local authority and other authorities or agencies in order to bring the change in the existing social policy. The basic assumption of this approach is homogeneity of values and interests through which substantive agreement or proposal is obtainable. The second strategy is competition. In this strategy, contending parties utilize commonly accepted campaign tactics to persuade, to negotiate and to bargain with willingness to arrive at working agreement. The third strategy is disruption. In the strategy of disruption signifies a more militant approach and it may include strikes, boycotts, fasts, tax refusals, sit-ins, etc. Lee also mentions riots and guerrilla warfare, though these may be omitted as use of violence will be unacceptable to social workers. Lee seems to follow a sequence that may be taken as meaning that one should begin from a collaboration approach, may resort to a disruption strategy for the achievement of the desired objectives if earlier strategies do not produce the desired results. Another thing which is important to understand social action is the models of social action. 
the models of social action are of two types elitist social action and popular social action. Elitist social action involves legislative action model, which is a process in which some elites either by themselves or in coalition with like minded individuals, legislators and agencies resort to lobbying and allied activities in order to achieve some benefits for the entire segment of the people and prevent some maladies from affecting their clientele and to remove some problems that is hindering their growth. The usual method is elite groups are conducting studies on the gravity, extent and urgency of the problems, creating public opinion and lobbying and try to modify social policy and legislations. The second kind of model under this is economic sanction model. In this process, the elites by gaining control over some economic, social and political or religious institutions try to obtain benefits of the society. So, Lalinsky's proxies for the people is a program of this kind. He approached the middle class group and the churchmen who owned stocks in Eastman Kodak Company and obtained several proxies for his organization, Fight. With the strength of these proxies, Fight forced the board of directors of the company to open a training center and to provide a job program for the blacks. The third submodel under the elitist model is direct physical action model, a process where elites take the law into their own hands and punish those who res are responsible for the cause of injustice and thus try to bring about benefit to their clientele. The Momo movement and the 40 groups in Kenya did much to hasten the day of freedom for that country by their terroristic activities. Naxalites adopted the same process on the perpetrators of feudal oppression. Their action has drawn national attention to the problems of the rural poor and enlightened self-interest has urged the rulers to announce several reform measures after the outbreak of Naxalbari activities. A more typical example of this model would be what Indian revolutionary groups did during the freedom struggle. The second type of social action Brito termed as is the popular social action again identifying three sub models. Number one, conscientization model of popular social action, wherein Paul of Reddit developed the concept of conscientization initially in the South American context. Later through his experience in the US and Guinea-Bissau, he has further classified the pedagogy of the oppressed. Frede felt that this situation contained exciting possibilities for the true liberation of humankind as well as for the existing demonstration of man. He believed education can be a tool for and it is based on concept of creating awareness among masses through education. The second model he talked about was dialectical mobilization model of popular social action. Dialectic means the art of logical disputation. When individuals or groups take up extreme positions and argue, the position of one may be taken as a thesis and that of the others as antithesis. Supporting that as a result of the augmentation, they come to a certain conclusion acceptable to both. The result may be termed as synthesis. It is promoting conflict to exploit the contradiction in a system with the belief that the better system will emerge as a result. The third submodel is the direct mobilization model of popular social action. In this process, the actionists take up specific issues pertaining to the oppressed. They analyze the causes which are the root of injustice. They formulate the alternative policies, procedures to mobilize the masses for protest activities for the purpose of achieving the sub objective. One more thing that is important to understand social action is the principles of social action. What is a principle? A principle is a general law, normative or empirical or a rule adopted or professed as a guide to action, a settled ground or basis of conduct or practice. Here we describe the principles of social action. 
Considering Cardian principle of mobilization as a typical example of the direct mobilization model of social action, Brito in 1984 brought out the following principles of social action. Number one, principle of credibility building. Number two, principle of legitimization. Then principle of dramatization, principle of multiple strategies, the principle of dual approach and the principle of manifold programs. Let us look into the details of these principles. The principle of credibility building. It is a task of creating a public image of the leadership. The organization and the participants of the movement are champions of justice, rectitude and truth. It helps in securing the recognition from the opponent, the reference public and the peripheral participants of the movement. Credibility can be built through one or many of the following ways. Number one. Gestures of goodwill towards opponent. The example is the Zulu rebellion occurred in 1906. Gandhi, considering himself as the citizen of Natal, offered to offered a form of a voluntary Indian stretcher bearing company for the service of the wounded Natal forces. The company undertook the task of nursing the wounded Zulu rebels and loyalists alike back to health. At times, the volunteers had to walk 40 miles often. Through the hilly areas, the commanding officers, who had been bitterly against the return of Gandhi to South Africa, were surprised at his devotion. When Gandhi was in England, World War I broke out. He recruited students for the service in British Ambulance Corps on the Western Front. These gestures of goodwill towards the opponents projected the image of Gandhi as a true humanitarian personality. This philosophy of his of non-violence and belief in the conversion of the enemy facilitated the credibility building process among his opponents, the British. The second way is example setting. Gandhi always practiced what he preached. When the Congress, at his insistence, decided to surrender titles, Gandhi surrendered his decorations of the Kesare Hind, the Zulu war model and Boer war model to Lord Chelmsworth. Dr. Jinder Singh, the Maxessia Award winner in 2001, had set example of water conservation in many villages of Rajasthan by making check dams through mobilization of village resources before starting water conservation movement at a much larger scale. The third way of creating credibility is selection of typical urgently felt problems for struggles. Gandhi had not made such a mark in Indian politics when he formally started the non-cooperation movement in 1921. Barely two years had passed since he had entered the Indian politics. His emergence as a leader within so short a time can be explained by his ability to select the urgently felt problems of the people. This is very much akin to the concept of felt needs in community organization. The leaders gain credibility if they stress on the felt needs of the people. Scarcity of water has remained one of the pressing problems of the people of Rajasthan. That is why when Dr. R. Singh initiated his interventions on this issue, his credibility was automatically established. Another way of achieving credibility is success. The anti-humiliation of wayfarers campaign, the Khera district farmers suspension of land revenue satyagraha, and his Satyagraha at Ahmedabad mill of Gandhi are a pre-non-cooperation period struggles. The success of these limited struggles raised his credibility to a high level. The facts that his organization succeeded in several instances established the credentials of Gandhi. Successful efforts help in setting up credibility of the leader and the philosophy he or she is preaching. Seeing the successful work of Singh in certain villages in Rajasthan, state government also came forward to extend its support. Local leaders from various other villages and NGO professionals also approached him for help. Now let us look at the second principle of social action. That is the principle of legitimization. Legitimization is a process of convincing the reference public and the general public that the movement objectives are morally right. The ideal would be making a case for the movement as a moral imperative, 
the movement makers might use theological, philosophical, legal or technical public opinion paths to establish the tenability of the movement's objectives. Conversely, the principle includes the elements of delegitimization of the position of adversary. Legitimization is a continual process. Before launching the problem, the leaders should justify their actions. Subsequently, as a conflict accelerates to higher stages, and as the leaders add new dimension to their program, further justifications are added and fresh arguments are put forth. Leaders alone does not do such justification, the followers to contribute to the legitimization process in the course of their participation. They attempt to get the approval of the outsiders to a conflict and strikingly seen in war propaganda. It is demonstrated in labor strikes and lockouts in which both parties are at great pains to win the sympathy of the public. Following are the three approaches to legitimization. Number one, theological and religious approach to legitimization. Gandhi used this approach during the freedom movement. He appealed the, to serve dharma by revolting against injustice of British. Gandhi placed his arguments around popular religious concepts such as dharma. He would convince the peasants that the satisfaction of their carefully moderated demands was most urgently called for by dharma, that it is their sacred duty to force the authorities to perform their dharma towards them. His appeal to serve dharma by revolting against injustice and by seeking redressal for their grievances strengthened the self-interest motivation of peasantry. Such an approach added steel to determination and fighting morals of the followers. As a champion of dharma, peasants went ahead to face all their enemies without fear and with perfect confidence for their own cause. The second way to legitimization is moral approach to legitimization. For Gandhi, Satyagraha should be resorted to only as a last measure. After all the other efforts at the settlements through established constitutional channels have been exhausted and have completely failed. Western thinkers justify even violent actions by citizens if the state has refused to change towards a manifest evil and if all the other attempts have proved useless. Another example of this approach is people associated with the campaign against child labor through peaceful rallies, persuasive speeches, use of media, organizing, drawing competitions among school children. These have helped to create an environment against child abuse in the country. As a result, employing children in any occupation is considered morally wrong and it becomes a moral obligation to ensure that all children below the age of 14 years go to school instead of earning a livelihood. The third approach to legitimization is legal technical approach to legitimization. At Bardoli, the government had decided to raise land revenue rates by 22%. The actual rise in some places was high, as high as 60%. Gandhi pointed out that this decision was contrary to the government itself in 1919. The Bombay Legislative Council too had codified its objection for any raise in agriculture taxation. Therefore, Gandhi included, among other reasons, some technical reasons to show that the government was unjustified and that his satyagraha was justified. Another illustration or another example could be people engaged with the campaign for people's right to health, which has been based on the argument of human rights issues, fundamental rights and government's commitment to health for all. It gives credibility to the moment. The third principle of social action is principle of dramatization. Almost every mobilizer uses this principle of dramatization. Dramatization is a principle of mass mobilization by which the leaders of the movement galvanize the population into action by emotional appeals of heroism, sensational news management, novel procedures, pungent slogans and such other techniques. Some of the mechanisms of dramatization could be like use of songs, catchy songs which put forth the cause of a movement. During freedom struggle, local talent was tapped and composed songs to stimulate the enthusiasm of people. Powerful speeches, Gandhi's speeches evoked optimal fear of a 
villainous behavior of the opponent and gave an opportunity for the exhibition of heroic sacrifice for the Satyagrahis. Gandhi's appeal to sacrifice and martyrdom was thrilling and it was a special appeal for the youth to work for their cause. Role of women, making prominent women lead marches was a technique that gave a dramatic effect to the movement. At Rajkot, Kasturba Gandhi herself inaugurated the civil disobedient movement by quoting arrest herself. Boycott. Boycott is a dramatic way of influencing public opinion both when the efforts is successful and when it is crushed. Picketing and hartals, voluntary closure of shops and other organizations was also used by Gandhi to dramatize the issue. Slogans, Bharat Chodo, Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao, Jal Hi Jeevan, Say No to Drugs, HIV AIDS, Knowledge is Prevention, etc. are some of the slogans used to give dramatic effect to various social movements. The next principle of social action is principle of multiple strategies. There are two basic approaches to development. One is conflictual and other is non-conflictual. Taking the main thrust of the program, one can classify it as political, economic or social. Zeltman and Duncan have identified four development strategies from their experience of community development that are reframed for the use of social action. These are education strategy, persuasive strategy, facilitative strategy and power strategy. Education strategy can include adult education. Gandhi adopted this strategy in almost all his campaigns. In this strategy, the prospective participants are educated at the individual, group and mass level. Individual level work. At the Bardoli, the Satyagraha volunteers went to the farmers individually and explained to them the causes, functions. Individual level work at Bardoli, the Satyagraha volunteers went to the farmers individually and explained to them the causes, functions and implications of their involvement in the Satyagraha. Group level work, Gandhi also operated at the group level. He propagated for this purpose a new type of adult education, which he called political education. Mass level work, to conduct mass level education, Gandhi and his followers used oral and printed media. Mass meetings were held on innumerable occasions and in place for localized and national campaigns. Education by demonstration. There is ample literature in extension science on the utility of the demonstration technique for increased knowledge, developing a positive attitude and for including the largest population to adapt the innovation. Gandhi used the demonstration in his campaign for converting the Congress, conversion to the Congress and converting the opponents. The second strategy is the persuasive strategy. Persuasive strategy is the adoption of a set of action, procedure to bring about change by reasoning, arguing and inducing others to accept viewpoint. Gandhi used this strategy constantly seeking opportunities for dialogue with opponents. At Wycom, an intense attempt was made to convert the state authorities and Brahmin opponents. The volunteers in this training were oriented towards understanding the viewpoint of the orthodox opponents and upon winning them over the persuasion. Facilitative strategy refers to a set of procedures and activities to facilitate the participation of all sections of the society in the mass movement. Gandhi's preference for non-violent action eliminated the necessity for expensive weapons. This preference made his campaign compatible with monetary realities of the participants and it reduced the moral calms arising out of the general social ethos of ahimsa of the country. This preference also facilitates women to participate fully in the program. In Salt Satyagraha, Gandhi did not go into technicalities of salt making. He simply asked the followers to make consumable salt by boiling the seawater. This simplicity did facilitate greater participation. Last but not the least is a power strategy. 
it involves the use of coercion to obtain the desired objectives. The forms of coercion may vary. Gandhi used social ostracism as one of the techniques of power strategy. Satyagrahis were instructed not to injure the dissenter physically and not to cut the flows of necessities to him. They made the delinquent a political outcast and put them beyond the pale of social intercourse. Gandhi also gave a call to the title holders to relinquish their honorary positions though it did not bear fruit in the initial stage. But by using the techniques of social ostracism, much progress was made. The program of picketing and dharna are the part of power strategy adopted by Gandhi. The next principle of social action is the principle of dual approach. Any activist who has built counter system or revive some moribund system that is thought to be beneficial to the needs of mobilized social self-help basis without involving the opponent. This is a natural requirement consequent upon the attempt to destroy the system established maintained by the opponent. Gandhian constructive work program performed such a function. In a small measure together with the conflictual programs of Satyagrahis, this cooperative effort indicates that Gandhians adopted or attempted to a dual approach in their mobilization. Last but not the least is the principle of manifold programs. It meant to develop a variety of programs with the ultimate objectives of mass mobilization. These can be broadly categorized into three categories, social programs, economic programs and political programs. Social programs, Gandhi gave many years to social reform activities. He worked for removal of prejudice against the untouchables. He labored on behalf of the children in order to protect them from early marriage. He urged the recognition of women's rights. He sought to control the use of alcohol and harmful drugs in India. By paying attention to the realities, Gandhi tried to build up a human resource of the nation. Economic programs. Khadi is an economic program as well as a social program. Gandhi gave it a political connotation as well. As an economic measure, it filled the need to strengthen the economic base of a section of participants of the movement. This program together with the village industrial program brought into the freedom movement a vast number of artisans of our villages. Khadi assisted to develop and indicate Swadeshi mentality, bearing Khadi became a point of honor for all nationalists. Last but not the least is the political programs. By the time Gandhi entered the scene, due to the variety of historical mobilizational and accidental factors, a cleavage had developed between Muslims and the Hindus. But to face the common threat and to struggle for the common cause, conflicting aspirations had to be submerged. In order to achieve this, Gandhi inducted the Congress and the Hindu population into the struggle for a Muslim cause, the Khilafat movement is such a political program. With concluding the principle, we would like also to understand the skills that are important for social action. The social workers for practicing social action need a lot of skills. These skills are no different from the journal social work skills. Professional social worker uses these skills by combating the ethics and principles of professional social work. However, a social worker using social action as a method of social work requires certain skills and more important among these are communication skills, analytical and research skills, intervention skills, training skills, managerial skills, relational and relationship building skills. Rational and relationship skills, the social worker should be having skills for building rapport with the individuals and groups and skills for maintaining these relations. He or she should be able to develop and maintain professional relationships with the clients and the agency. The social worker should have the ability to identify the leadership qualities among the clientele and should be skillful to harness these qualities for social action. Along with this, working harmoniously with the established local leaders is also needed. 
he or she should be able to deal with the intra-group and inter-group conflict effectively. Another important skill is analytical and research skills. The social activist should be able to objectively study the socio-cultural and economic characteristics of the community. He or she should be able to find out the pressing problems and needs of the client. He or she should be able to analyze the social problems, the factors contributing to the social problems and its ramifications on the socio-cultural, political, ideological, cultural and economic aspects of life. Intervention skills after the need of identification, the social activist should have the ability to help the client to practical intervention strategies to deal with the problem. The social worker should provide various options to the clients and help them in analyzing pros and cons of each option for taking up proper steps. Social action may require confrontation with authorities. He must inform the community about the consequences of taking up hard steps like sit-ins, boycotts, strikes, etc. Managerial skills, the social worker also needs the knowledge and ability to handle organizations, which may be the outcome of the institutionalization of people's participation. He or she should be able to coordinate and collaborate with various groups and local leaders to unite the clientele for the required intervention. Communication skills are highly crucial for social action. The social worker should have the ability to develop effective public relations with local organizations and leaders. He or she should be effectively communicate verbally, including public speaking and in writing as well. Training skills for social activists help him or enable him to train local leaders. He or she should be able to train selected people at the local level aimed at imparting knowledge about the social issues taken up for action and modalities of carrying out the intervention including the confrontation process. They should also be trained to utilize social action strategies and tactics like confrontation, persuasion, negotiation, boycott, etc. without the use of violence. Let us sum up. In this module, we learnt various basic concepts related to social action and its process, models, strategies, principles and important skills. Social action often means refusing to follow the rules laid down by those in power and exercising instead the right to protest and contest unfair or ill-conceived policies or decisions and empower communities that have been abused, neglected or treated unfairly by authority or the society as a whole and give them the voice and some authority of their own. By drawing attention to inequality and injustice and by using unified action to confront or cooperate with policymakers, the society as a whole for bringing about significant social change. It is also called a secondary method for professional social practice for promoting sustainable social change through democratic and non-violent means.